Welcome to the part 2 of the 1 vs 2 challenge between the two German streamers Mara and Maurice vs the one and only Beyond Standards aka Shanks. Game number 3. We are again on the bottom left side of the map vault and we are picking random against Gondor and Rohan. And we will get to play with the Mordor faction, alright. Hopefully, unlike in the films, we're gonna be able to win this because that's like in the films, you know, Mordor against Gondor and Rohan. And you know what Kofmok like to see, boys? The age of men is over. The time of the orc has come. Smeagol, and we have two orcs, and I don't build anything at the beginning of the game, and the reason why is when we, you know, build those lumber mills later on, they will give us the wood bonus, reducing the cost of our structures inside the castle, and we can build the slaughterhouse, for example, which normally costs 350, only for 280. And that's very important too, because Mordor is a very weak faction at the beginning of the game, and by building smart at the beginning we can get to the mid game very fast and then mordor is gonna be everything but not weak you know and later on we will get the chance to recruit two nazgûls the witch king with three flying creatures all over the map it's gonna be quite <laughs> impossible and again the same concept here the longer the game goes on the difficult the more difficult it's gonna be because they have two spell books they have more heroes they have all walls and they will outskill us obviously and for that reason i will try my best to win this game once again as soon as i potentially can and would you look at that we have four mills outside we have the full wood bonus already which is amazing but we won't stop here expand even further and get grow rich you know grow rich we're gonna recruit trolls later on mumu kills nazgus everything what mordor as a faction has to offer And also Haradrim Palace is going to be very important because with the Haradrims we can also capture those outposts and put them inside the outposts. And outpost control is going to be very important because what we can do is we can build the outpost and build a new orc pit at each outpost we build up. So we have like non-stop pressure. Remember Mordor as a faction is able to make power points, to gain power points after losing orcs. And when we get to build like 5 or 8 orc pits in total, we will lose lots of orcs throughout the game. And that will grant us additional power points and stuff, you know? Okay, so... Again, early game, we need to be careful to not lose too much. But this time, I mean, Isengard is a bit more aggressive faction. And with Mordor, we will lose eventually one or two settlements, but that's fine. We are able to defend this one. That's amazing. Level 2 orc now. That's even better. Because level 2 orcs unlock the black orcs passive ability which makes them deal more damage. Okay, so look at the map boys, you know. <laughs> map control is everything. That's very important to understand. Okay, I mean we should make sure to not lose the settlement. Let's use the Haradrams for defense. Orcs, they cost nothing but time and let's put pressure on him so let's just put pressure the idea behind this move is to force them to defend themselves other than going to attack me because all we need is a bit more time you know mordor's mid game in this map vault is extremely strong we will defend this no problem kill the soldiers I mean, they're actually pressuring me quite nicely, this game. But the top left spot is looking amazing for me. And we have like a... <laughs> look, our... <laughs> we have now already a troll cage coming up almost, you know? That's how, ri how rich we are. Very soon we will have the mountain trolls running around the map and putting in so much work for us. Okay. So, um, once again, the same situation. They are both going for horses eventually. And that means against Mordor, it's even worse than against Isengard. Because Mordor has so many ways to deal with the horses. So, we have the rune soldiers from the Haradrim Palace level 2. We have the trolls. And later on, we have the Nazgûls and the Witch King. And all the cavalry from the opponent team will get countered by pretty much everything beside orcs. And we will get to collect free power points throughout the game. And remember, Mordor is a faction doesn't even need siege weapons. So we can use our mountain trolls to break through the walls and gates too. Which is amazing when you think about this. We don't have to build the siege walls at all. We can use moment kills or trolls and just make knock knock, you know? Okay, so let's recapture this. 
Oh my goodness, man. We, uh, guys, we're gonna be so rich this game. Unlike in real life. In real life, we are not that rich. But at least in a video game. Outpost purchased. Capture it. Amazing. Amazing. We can also buy this outpost in the middle of the map. It's even better. Amazing. Let's recruit trolls. This might be a record, by the way, guys. Uh, you know, when they don't hurt me soonish, I think that's going to be a record. We can win this game in the next five minutes. I will show you what Mordor is capable to do when you don't hurt Mordor early game. Look, Theodian King shall rise once more. <laughs> My golem is annoying. We are dancing around the rosy. Theodian is trying to get me. Look, he, look the King of Rohan. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Okay, perfect. So, amazing. We have now the rune soldiers too, which is even better because Condor has nothing to deal with them just yet. This Condor has to recruit rangers, you know, that's very important. And also Rohan has to recruit Eobin, the shield maiden of Rohan. Okay, so perfect. Dude, we are so rich already, man. We have oh, two, we have trolls on the field, runes, and we have almost 3k on top of that on the, in the bank, you know? That's amazing. We have two outposts. We're gonna get the third one very, very soon. My trolls are mean ones. You can't handle them. Troll cage is all about to hit level 2. And that's very important for the troll cage because the drama trolls, they are the most important units in the game. When you play Mordor, the amount of utility and leadership they provide is insane and your trolls will need them to become strong without them the trolls can die quite fast against towers and against faramir and boromir and eowyn for example but with the mountain trolls the drama troll combination and the witch king later on you can make your trolls to literal heroes in this game one troll with leadership can be stronger than aragorn in a one-on-one -on -one matchup and that's crazy when you think about this Okay, so no panicking, everything under control. Amazing. Look, the troll is creeping too. Nice. So, okay, let's get the lair. Oh boy, oh boy. I mean, they will be surprised by the Nazgul very fast, by the way. My Nazgul is gonna be there very, very soon. I wanna go for a Nazgul first and then go for a Witch King later. Because, you know, there is like a 3,000 gold differential between the Nazgul and the Witch King. And look at him. I'm going to use the Eye of Sauron here. Which affects the Haradrims on top of the outpost. And we can defend this with the Troll. He's healing up. Please don't destroy my outpost. Come on now. Get map control. Very important. The problem is we have no command points, you know. That's the problem that we have. We have command points kept pretty much non-stop. Can we defend this outpost? I want to sell those orcs somehow, man. Like, we can't recruit any more units. Okay, we, de we defended the outpost. It's amazing, actually. Oh! <laughs> oh, I see you. He has archers over here. Can we... Oh, maybe it's not the best idea to go there, but it's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it anyway. It's fine, it's fine. Hit the archers, hit the archers. Troll, go eat them alive. Punch him, punch him, troll, do something. I'm gonna lose my mind. Attack them, attack them, attack them. Now he has rangers too. Now we need to run. Abort mission, abort mission. Run, 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 run. Okay, so we have 6,000 in the bank. Maybe it's time for the Witch King. I don't know. I think Witch King is gonna be better. But I also need to recruit Drama Trolls. It's also very really important. Okay, I think it's gonna be Witch King, boys. Oh boy. Rohirrim archers without fire arrows. I see Farami also on the field. Ilma, Theorin for the Rohan player. Run through my runes. Switch formation. Nice. Double kill. Legolas. I see you, Legolas. I want to kill him. I want to kill him. Now, this is going to be a perfect demonstration of the mighty troll. Because the Legolas, when he's level 1 or 2, he's going to be quite weak. And you can't kill the troll, troll before he comes to you. You will lose. Because there is a chance that Troll is going to knock you down on the ground, you know? Get over the map. 
Witch King almost, on it, almost out. Oh boy, let's get fire arrows. We can do whatever we want. With this map control, we can do whatever we want. Including finishing the game very fast. Let's break the gate. <laughs> you know, be annoying. If you have so much money. I want, I want to have like two trolls. I want to break through the Gondor wall. That's what I want to do. I might also want to buy the banner later on to get my Oryx to level 2. Which, again, unlocks the a Black Oryx ability. Makes them deal more damage, you know? Be careful. I think we crept entire map too. I think the only creep they took was the top right. Oh, did we break through the gate? Yes, sir. Okay, nice. That's amazing. So basically, when you want to do stuff like this, you need to understand in which... Oh my goodness, that's not good. But in which position you are, you know? When you break the gate and you lose your troll, it's fine. Because the broken gate is going to cost them more than the troll for you. So they will lose more money off that. Especially in this situation in which we have way more map control than our opponents do. Uh, we can have much easier time to replace the units we are losing, you know? With the Witch King, with the debuff. Let's creep this. Get uh, get this one. Put them inside the outpost. And we are good team. We can actually sell them too. I want to get Ben upgrade now. We have so much money. Holy. <laughs> Big guy. No, no. We can do whatever we want. Alright. So they have one outpost. Only maybe two outposts. Top one is also potentially under, under their control. Which is okay. Yeah, there is another outpost they just bought or captured. But it's okay. We're going to just go ham. And now, when you put the units on top of the wall, the Witch King deals splash damage. Oh boy. Look, 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 look. Look, look. One shot. One opportunity. It's all, it's all about speed, boys. Break it. Nice. What, Gond <laughs> you remember the scene of Gandalf? You are soldiers of Gondor. Whatever comes through the gate, hold your ground. And then the trolls are marching in, you know? Okay. Perfect. 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 Just go ham. We have the rune soldiers also. Witch King, Drama Troll leadership. Amazing. Almost we have Darkness too, for even greater amount of leadership. Look, we can kill those knights with everything that we have to offer. And he has zero archers, zero damage, zero money. Okay. Oh, Rohan is coming. Gondor calls for it and Rohan will answer. <laughs> Master the Rohirrim. Look, we are... Orcs in the meantime taking over the game, boys. Let's recruit both the Nazgûls, just why not? And we have almost darkness too. Let's turn the map into a dark place, shall we? Oh boy, we are so rich. Holy guacamole. And Gondor is defeated, boys. Now it's time for Rohan. What can Rohan do against such a reckless seat? Let's find out. They are attacking my Witch King, but that's why you need Eowyn. Eowyn's smite ability deals actually great, great amount of damage. Look, the trolls! It's a massacre. We are so rich, we are just recruiting two Nazgûls and even being able to buy the castle. <laughs> Look, the troll is smashing everybody. Oh boy, oh boy, Lick Legolas. The Prince of the Mirkwood Elves. Look, the King of Rohan and the uh, Elma, the Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, GG well played. That's gonna be it, boys. The game number three. 3-0 three, is the score. We're gonna jump right into the next game. Victorious, just like that. And we made potentially lots of money this game too, let's see. Yeah, we made a great amount of money. We made a bit more than them together. See you guys in the next game. Game number four, boys. Game number four. We are picking random again. <laughs> we are picking random again. And this time we will get to play. Once again, Isengard, man. Come on now, dude. Why, 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 why? What is the RNG? Guys, we play four games now. In three out of four games, I picked every time random. In three out of four games, I get Isengard. I got Isengard. In the other game, I got Mordor. So in four out of four games, I got to play with the evil faction. Not one single time Gondor or Rohan... I'm cursed. I'm literally cursed. Maybe it's because... Maybe it's because I'm, a, I'm an evil person myself, you know? By the way, we are talking German with each other. So I just told them that I am again evil, if you're wondering. They are really cool, nice, uh, cool and nice dudes, by the way. Mara and Maurice. 
they are very fun they are also in love with the lord of the rings just like i am just like you guys are and we will be playing this 2v1 format until they will be able to beat me it's all about fun and entertainment of course you know but also i'm trying i'm trying hard you know it's not like i'm messing up with them i'm messing around with them i'm just playing for my life Uruks, go go Uruks, nice. All right, so offense. Once again, when we play Isinger, we want to play a bit more offensively, and we can keep up the pressure on them and get map control in the meantime. I mean, the same situation like in the previous games, we're gonna use those workers to expand. And look, <laughs> she's following me. <laughs> Come, peasants, follow. Look at the map control, man. That's amazing, actually. Okay. Again, we wanna get vision control let's destroy the farm oh but this time we're gonna lose also some of the settlements but it's fine it is fine it is how it is expand 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 oh no okay i mean it's one for one it's fine Look at the look at me but look at me I can't even talk. Look at my beast boys. I am rich. Do you guys know the scene in the uh, you know in the Justice League when he found when he finds the Flash, you know, Flash, the guy, the Speedy Gonzalez guy, and Flash is like, What is your superpower? He's asking Batman, and he's like, I'm rich. I feel like the same in this game. I'm rich. That's my superpower. And by the way, Isengard also is the wealthiest faction. So we have like you have like three tools from your spell book. You have industry, devastation, and fuel the fires, especially, which makes you incredibly rich. So basically, the way the game works is like eco evil factions are focusing more on eco, like industry, devastation. You have scavenger for Mordor, fuel the fires from Isengard, and good factions are focusing more on reinforcements. So basically, you can summon elves, rangers, ants, eagles, EOD, and stuff like this. You know. I mean, even though every faction is different, the game doesn't feel like unbalanced, in my opinion. Every faction has their strengths and weaknesses. And trust me, that one, every faction can win and lose against each other. So even though uh, when you look at from a far distance, you might see like, oh my god, you know, the good factions have their walls, and evil factions, they don't have that, and good factions will always be able to win this. But that's simply not true. That's not true. Evil factions can be way stronger than good factions in many, many situations. And because evil factions have no walls, they have also plenty of those cheap towers you can build up. You know, they cost only 150 each. So it's not like you can just go inside the castle and, you know, go and crush them. That's not possible. And later on, every building they have, furnace, slaughterhouse, everything which is level 3, is going to be also able to shoot. So basically, uh, the, despite the fact that evil factions have no walls, they have still a much more durable and more defensive castle compared to good factions because then you just break in the gates and that's it your towers they cost 800 each for gondor 700 each for rohan so it's way more expensive compared to the towers for evil factions because they only cost 150 and you can build a lot of them let's get the outpost amazing Again, we have the same situation like in the previous Isengard games. We go for the Warp Pit and Uruk Pit at the same time. And we want to get the mobility advantage from the Warp Riders with the Warp Chant. We can also pick up the Palantir later on. Then we can put on the pressure. And then we want to, you know, in the meantime, level up the Lourdes. It's all about distraction, you know. Our Warps are meant to distract them. So then later on, we will have like infantry army. Remember, Isengard is like the best infantry army in the game because you have. The Uruks, they are the strongest swordmen. And also, they are fast, you know? Amazing. Okay. Armory. Ooh, 
Ooh, there is a Faramir. A wild Faramir ap ap approaches. Oh, be careful. I will represent the men of Gondor. Thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate it. On my Twitch channel. Really means a lot. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we have 2,000. I mean, dude. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, boy. We have a tower door there, though. I mean, I don't think... We have also archers inside the tower, so they don't... They won't be able to destroy my outpost. Multitasking and also macro. This is what's important. This is what matters. Look, we are creeping. We are putting pressure. We are destroying farms. We are protecting ours. So that's like the, the best thing. Okay. Industry. Nice. Yeah, boys, look at the minimap. You know, in, in this situation, you know, when you are playing this game for a bit, then you know how much money you have, and you have, like, a feeling about how much money and resources your opponents have. And because they have, like, not much left on the field, they have maximum three settlements outside, while we have, like, 10 or 12, we know that we have at least twice the money compared to them. So we know what to expect, and that's the reason why I'm always saying map control is everything, because that's simply the fact. This map control doesn't make you only rich, but also makes your opponent poor, which is like a win-win situation in every single aspect of the game, in every single time. So even in this game, it's very important. Even when you have like 50,000, you are like, okay, I have enough money, I can do whatever I want, but trust me, you can't. You just can't. Because the amount of money you need to spend later on into upgraded, upgrading your units, reviving your heroes, is going to be just too expensive. And for that reason, you need to make sure that you have, you are getting like lots of money, a thousand resources every minute, for example. It bare minimum to be able to sustain all of this investment later on. Okay, I mean, we can disengage whenever we want, we want to, no problem. I have War on cooldown, but I want to give them Blades now and I can turn and fight. Because he has only Blades, no Armor. And we have Blades and Armor and Hole ability almost back up, so we can definitely win this. Let's win this. Now we can use Hole. Uh oh! We didn't use Hole. Oh my god. I was hope I... Okay. My bad, I guess. Oh my! Okay, nothing happened there. Nothing happened there. Don't let me know this in the comment section down below. Please. Don't time this. Nothing happened. And that's what happens when you are greedy, you know? I was like, okay, let's recruit. Oh my, please don't! And oh, what? The Warwicks, they are not very smart. The thing is, I was like, okay, let's recruit three Warp Riders and then we can keep them alive so we don't have to keep the Warp Pit anymore. We can demolish the Warp Pit and that's what happens when you are greedy. Lord's almost level 4, very close to be level 5. That's going to be even better. Let's get the Outpost too. I mean, we have legit, what? I would say 90% of the map, maybe more. That's crazy, isn't it? That's crazy, actually. Okay, let's demolish this. And we can go for a Siege very soon. So we can build already the Siege Warwick here. And just go knock knock. Again, the same mystique from the opponent team. They are once again making Knights in Rohirrim only. And our pikemen will be able to counter everything what they have to offer. Amazing. Perfect. Great. Oh boy, we are so rich. We are so rich. Uh oh, okay, he has fire arrows. Or she has fire arrows. I think the problem is gonna be again the command points. Oh boy, what is this? He has soldiers! Okay, that's abort mission. Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Oh, there she comes. But no upgrades yet, because she went for fire arrows first. That means no, no money for heavy armor. Oh, tower guards, really? We can micro this, we can micro this. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh. Micro, baby. Yeah. Amazing. Lourdes? Where is Faramir at? We crippled him? Nice, let's go. 
Carnage. You wanna fight? You wanna play rough? Say hello to my best hero in the game. Take this. Level 5. Okay, run. Run, lords. It's time to run. Bring back. Let's bring back up to save him from the knights. Ah, nah. It's not needed. Can kill the soldiers too. That's even better. And lords can shoot the tower guards, okay? Perfect. Amazing. Amazing. Let's combine them. Yeah, the problem is going to be command points. That's going to be a big problem. We have almost the money for Saruman too. And the best thing is Lourdes is level 5 by now. So that's even better. And Rohan is coming to eat for Gondor. Just like in the films. But it won't change anything. Okay. So let's make this combos even stronger. Get map control. Make sure that our opponent's team are staying poor. Lords, run. Bring the pikemen. We are fine, we are fine. Okay, we are just good. Perfect. Just make sure that we don't lose lords, you know. That's the most... Oh boy. The Rohirrim arches with fire arrows. Look, they are melting our pikemen. They are melting them. Want to make also siege works here? Siege from two sides at the same time. But again, we have no command points. So we can't recruit any more Ballista. What we can recruit is only the Rams. The Batarang Rams, okay? But it's fine. They are also very strong, the Batarang Rams. The weakness is they are melee. So they can be killed before they can make it to the wall. But they deal great amount of damage to the wall and to the gate too. And now it's a very awkward situation, though. Because we get, we have, like, the potential to siege from both the sides, but we have not enough army to... support the pushes, you know? We have, like, only few pikemen and lords here around the situation, around this location. But we have no archers, you know, to protect the ballista. Dude, what is my ballista doing? Look, nice micro from Maurice. Look, Maurice is playing out of his mind. Look at the micro from the Gondor player. Nicely done. Holy, that's good. Okay, let's go ham. Make sure that they... Oh, we can cover this, huh? We can cover this. Let's cover this. By the way, Isengard pikemen are stronger than tower guards in a one-on-one -on -one situation. But tower guards are tankier against soldiers in fire, for example. But we have also Lourdes leadership, of course. You know, Lourdes makes sure that we are dealing way more damage. 60% more damage for the pikemen. So that's one of the reasons why we are able to slaughter the enemy tower guards. But we need to find a solution to this Rohirrim Arches. They, are, they seem to deal actually a crazy amount of damage. And for that reason, we need to make sure to draw the attention from the Rohan player back to her own castle. So right now, she's like with everything that she has in the castle from her ally. And when we attack her castle, she needs to go back, okay? Okay. So, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, it's about time. It's about time. It's about drive. It's about power. Saruman the Great. Saruman the Great White Wizard. We have two combos and one pikeman. Hopefully that's going to be enough. We have also Warchan. The problem is we have no lords. No, Warch Riders, please don't die. Okay, let's retreat. My, my lord is at the bottom side of the map. So, basically, my... Army of combos and pikemen, they have not enough leadership. They, have, they will have only Warchan and Saruman, but I think that's fine. Hopefully, that's going to be enough. But you, you can see uh, she is melting my pikemen. We have Saruman now on the field. We need to protect this. I can cripple this Lego, um, Faramir when, she, when he comes close, but he won't. Okay, nice. So it's fine. I, I'm not too mad about this, to be honest with you, because them, them killing my units will make more room for my command points. So it's not the end of the world. So we need to make combos also for the bottom side. But for, first of all, we need to go inside the jeans now in the castle of Rohan and start hitting like a truck, okay? That's the plan. So we have Saruman, the white wizard. Unlike in the films, he is now joining personally the battle of the Helm's Deep and, you know, sporting the army of Isengard not only uh, mentally but also physically in this fight, okay? March to Isengard. Uh, march to Rohan and leave none alive. Alright. 
But my lord, there is no such force. <laughs> we need thousands to break in. Tens of thousands. A new power base, right? Dude, I'm such a nerd. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm such a nerd. I keep always losing my mind in those situations because that's one of the reasons why I'm in love with those games, by the way. Oh boy, did you see what happened? The Fed... Uh, I'm not body shaming, by the way, but the Fed, uh, Drohan Citadel, blocked the fireball. <laughs> so I couldn't hit the others. All right. Oh, Gimli is on the field. Gimli. Oh boy, lords. Maybe we can, maybe we can defend this. Let's try. We can use them. Carnage. Let's do it. But you see, this Gondor is kind of not very sportive because her his ally Rohan is about to lose and he's attacking my outpost instead of helping his ally that's not cool man that's not cool it's not cool <laughs> where was Gondor when Rohan fell when Rohan fell okay so we have look our money oh my 18,000 plus in the bank. The problem is when you have no lords, your damage is not going to be that great. So you need lords leadership or war chant because Saruman only gives you armor leadership, which is good, but it's not good when it comes to destroy buildings, for example. What is this Tyrion doing there? Get this fireball. Boom, son. You want to fight? Oh, you want to make peace, you and I, Tyrion King? <laughs> Level 6, amazing. All right. And now we go knock knock the Gondor bees. Gondor is now coming, finally. But Rohan is about to lose the last <laughs> farm. Now, Ro Gondor is helping Rohan with the Rohirrim summon. If that's not a meme, I don't know what it is. Boom! Blast them into the next dimension. Into the Shadow Realm. Yes, I'm a nerd. I like Yu-Gi-Oh too, man. Call me crazy, boys. Oh, but actually they are trampling cra- What? What is the trample damage? I mean, we have no watch and that's the problem, but it's fine. All we need to do is destroy the last remaining building, but I think we can win this fight even now. Um, because of Saruman leadership, of course, our army is quite tanky. And also leveled. 13 power points. I want to get Baldrock in this game. Can I get Baldrock in this game? Can I please get Baldrock in this game? Gimli versus the Worlds. Fireball him. Is Gimli dead? I want to kill Gimli. Break in, break in, break in. Dude, Gimli take, took one hour to be killed. But Rohan is defeated now. Mara has been destroyed. Sorry, Mara. <laughs> okay, so blast them. Now you are coming, Gondor. Now you are coming. Now that Rohan has been fully, completely destroyed. Now you decide to come. Really? Really? That's what you do, Gondor? That's what you do, Maurice? That's my Albin, that's my tainted land. You can't win this. Guys, I want you to please take a look into the minimap, okay? And tell me, do you see any settlement which is under control from my opponents? Not a single settlement. We have 100% map control. 100% map control beside the one castle he has which uh, by the way is about to be destroyed let's go ahead boys let's now merge the army of Sariman with the army of Lourdes so ultimate fusion I fusion summon three of my blue eyes white dragons <laughs> And he's defeated. GG well played. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, you know what to do. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.